In this video, we're going to take data we calculated in our previous video, and we're going to use it to help us determine the concentrations of our product and our reactant using our delta G value. So in our previous video, we calculated out the free energy at various temps, and we used that to solve the equilibrium constant. If we know the equilibrium constant, and we know the starting amount of one of our chemicals, we can solve what the amounts are at equilibrium. So let's take an example here. Let's go ahead and use our value at 298. We'd use our free energy value of about 5 kilojoules per mole. We'd plug that in and we'd found a K value of 0.136 at 298. So N2O4 is in equilibrium with two NO2s. And at 298 Kelvin, the K value was 0. 136. Let's assume N2O4's initial was one atmosphere and that our NO2 initial was zero. So we just had a container of N2O4. We brought it up to 298 Kelvin and it began to distribute. It began to partition itself out on both sides of this equilibrium. Our goal here is to find final NO2 pressure. Since this is in the gas phase, the equilibrium constant we calculated would technically be a Kp. And so this is done with pressures instead of molarities. Well, to set it up, like any other equilibrium reaction, I have some initial, so one atmosphere, and zero. I have some change. I'm going to lose some of my starting material. Well, for every one Starting molecule I lose, I make two products. So I'm going to gain twice as much products. Eventually, I will reach equilibrium. Well, I'll have my original pressure minus however many atmospheres I lost. That will give me my partial pressure at equilibrium. And for my NO2, well, all of my pressure of NO2 is just going to be what I gained. So its partial pressure is just going to be 2x. My equilibrium constant is my products, NO2 squared over my reactants, N2O4 to the first. Well, we know my K value, 0 0.136, must equal 2x squared over 1 minus x. Multiply this out a little bit. What I will then find is that 0 0.136 minus 0 0.136x is equal to, well, square both parts, equal to 4x squared. Rearrange and set equal to 0. 0 equals 4x squared plus 0 0.136x minus 0 0.136. We have a quadratic. We can solve the quadratic. We can find what x is how much of our starting material is going to break apart to become products. Remember that our quadratic is negative b plus or minus square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. Calculating these out, the plus option and the minus option will give us 0 0.168 and the minus option will give us Negative 0 0.202. Well, x can't be negative because we have generated more starting material from nowhere. So the only one that makes chemical sense is the positive 0.168. So x is 0 0.168, which means our partial pressure of N2O4 is going to be equal to 1 minus 0 0.168. And our pressures of NO2 is just going to be equal to 2 times 0 0.168. 0 0.336, 0 0.83. Plug those in, double check against our K values. 0 0.336 squared divided by 0 0.83 is equal to 0 0.136. So matches our K value. The partial pressure of NO2 that we expect at room temp is 3.36 which means we can find the mole fraction if we wanted. What fraction of the gas particles is actually the one that colors it brown? 
If you knew your moles over your total moles, you could solve it, but since pressure is related directly to moles, if we know our pressure over our total pressure, we can also solve it. 0 0.336 is our partial pressure for NO2. Our total pressure is the sum, 0 0.336 plus 0 0.83. Mole fraction is 0 0.288. So about 29% of all the gas at room temperature is NO2. Using this technique, we can calculate out the percentages at the cold temp and at the hot temp. And what we'll find is that at the cold temp, because the equilibrium is smaller, we will find that there's less products. At the hot, high temp, we'll find that there's more. But right around room temp, a little less than a third, a little bit more than a quarter of the material is the brown gas, which is why we see the color beginning to turn brown. When we're cold, it's very clear. When we're at room temp, it's beginning to change color. And when we're hot, it's definitely brown of the product gas. And so we can use the thermodynamic data, the entropy, the enthalpy, and the free energy to determine how much of a mixture will be which chemical without ever having to experimentally determine it on that mixture itself. As long as we know the thermodynamic data, we can, with reasonable accuracy, predict how much will be produced because the equilibrium is dependent on the free energy and the concentration is dependent on the equilibrium.